Hi, I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats at Hot Docs in downtown Toronto. I'm here with filmmaker Sasha Snow. How does it feel to have Hadwin's Judgment screening here at Hot Docs? Of course, it's a great honor to be in Canada's capital of documentary um, and this being a Canadian story and very much part of Canadian culture already. Um, it's kind of part of BC's cultural legacy already. So I'm, I'm a kind of outsider in this and it's nice to, to come back and show it where it all happened. And tell me a little bit about how you uh, learned of Grant Hadwin and this, you know, this very interesting and unique story. Um, I had been making a film in Siberia about the conflict between tigers and people. Uh, it's called Conflict Tiger and I finished that in 2006 and I was sitting in my office wondering what I should do next and I get a phone call from an American writer called John Valent uh, who said to me that he'd just seen Conflict Tiger, he wanted to write his next book based on that story and almost in passing he said, oh by the way you should read my first book because there are some uncanny similarities between your film and my book. And he sent me the book in the post, which was The Golden Spruce. And within minutes of reading it, I realized that this was a story that I had to make next. So we basically traded stories. He wrote a book of my film, and I made a film of his book. And so this, seven years later, I've realized my side of the deal. You know, yeah. And when you were reading The Golden Spruce uh, for the first time, what was it about Grant Hadwin, this disillusioned man in the in the logging industry uh, that really like captured your attention? You, you'd think that it would be hard for um, a kind of urban guy from London to identify with a logger um, from BC. I've never been to BC. I've never been in an old growth forest before. So you might find it difficult to understand how I would identify with him. But actually I identified with him philosophically and spiritually immediately as this kind of outsider this whistleblower, this man who had the courage of his convictions to actually act on his beliefs. Um, and that was a very powerful, um, powerful cause and, and something that resonated with me. And in terms of how Grant went about, uh, I guess, trying to get some change in terms of the old growth forest being clear cut but, and how he cut down this beautiful 300 old golden spruce just can you just speak a little bit to maybe how it was not the best way to go about the situation or maybe you think it was it, it was effective i don't know uh, it was definitely not the best way of going about it um it doesn't it's a kind of completely perverse act to attack the very thing that you love um, but i think he was uh, in a desperate situation he wasn't that uh connected with other people he would become very isolated he was mentally unbalanced and I think he was in the wrong, doing the wrong work for someone who has already um, had some predisposition to being um, unbalanced. Um, and I think that uh, the consequences of, of destroying the thing that he loved over the period of two or three decades slowly undid him. Um, and he had no way, he wasn't being listened to by his employers. Um, he found no outlet for it and I think that's what eventually led him to this very blinkered point of view where he couldn't see outside the context, he couldn't see the significance of what he was doing which was attacking the very thing that he loved, not just the tree but to hide a belief system behind the tree. Um, and do you think that Grant Hadwin could still be alive or what do you think happened to him because I know his death was mysterious? I think people want to keep him alive in their imagination because we like to feel that his spirit is still with us. Uh, I've probably talked to 50 or 60 people who knew him and I've only met one who thought he was dead. Um, there are lots of circumstantial things that just don't quite add up. And I, mean, I guess I've maybe fallen into the romantic trap of wanting to keep him alive as well. Um, I think, you know, for the hide and for his family, there are a lot of reasons for wanting closure. Um, so I guess it depends on your point of view, really. And where's the best place for us to find out more information on you and the film online? Uh, there's a website for the film, uh, which is www.hadwinsjudgment.com. 
and then I have a website which is um, my, my name, sashasnow.com. Well, thank you so much, Sasha, and congratulations on a very interesting film. Thank you very much, Katie. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats at Hot Docs in Toronto.